Welcome back everyone, this is Dirch, and I've got a video about Thought Lock today. Uh, here's a quick view of my build. And I'm going to go down and talk about Thought Lock here. So, Phase Lock causes the enemy to turn on their friends instead of being locked down. Additionally, Phase Lock's duration is increased, but so is its cooldown. The cooldown is actually bugged. So, uh, you get the extra duration. Typically, Phase Lock is... 5 seconds, so you get another 4 seconds to bring it to 9, and now with the binder here, another 5, so that's 14 seconds rather than 5 seconds, which is a big deal. So, typically, I don't really love Fae Thought Lock all the time, but it has gotten better um, since the October patch, and since I'm, I don't know, don't want to sound too arrogant, kind of a premier place for Maya information on the internet now, um, I thought I need to give Thought Lock its fair shake. So, I'm in the Bloodshot because I think it works best on tightly grouped enemies, but I mean, it can work really good anywhere. So, as you can see here, you're getting really long phase lock durations, even though uh, it's getting stuck here. And this that's a subsequence problem, not a Thought Lock problem, but I typically run Thought Lock with subsequence, not everyone does. So, it's got some advantages, obviously. Longer phase lock duration, less aggro on you since the enemies are fighting with each other and not you. So, very good for survival. If you like using the B, it can be really good for the B. Although, at the same time, when I'm using Thought Lock, I like to be in the close quarters because you're no longer holding enemies stationary. So, uh, you don't always have as good of uh, crit shots as you do with phase lock to play at that distance. So there's a bit of give and take there. Um, I love just sub-sequence with shotguns, because they're high burst and you can just really take out the enemy quick. And Some people like to leave the Thought Lock enemy alone and shoot everything else. I'd rather keep popping that bubble, because Helios is pretty good now. And the binder boosts Helios, so the more you can get that thing to pop, that means the more time Rune and Helios are popping, and then you have Cloud Kill kind of occupying that same area of effect. And outside of just your bullets and chain reaction, you can do a shitload of damage. Now, a few of the drawbacks of Thought Lock, and they're not all present during this video. Um, one is Chain Reaction does not proc off of your Thought Lock enemy. Now, this can also be a good thing that if you want to keep that enemy alive longer and you're not doing uh, subsequence, then you can keep that enemy alive easier since you won't accidentally kill them with a uh, chain reaction. So that's cool. Um, it retains all of your thought lock, or sorry, phase lock disadvantages. Like, uh, you know, if you can't pick up an enemy, you can't thought lock them and all that. But. Um, one of my most annoying things, and again, you don't really see it in this video, is Rabid Skags. And that's what the Thought Lock thread that you guys should read is uh, Thought Lock and the Rabbids that got away. So, with Phase Lock, one of the coolest things about it is holding that enemy stationary. And in Thought Lock, you don't do that. The enemies are still moving around, running around, and a lot of times with dangerous enemies like Rabid Skags, for example you will Thought Lock a Rabid Skag, and because it's either attacking other enemies, or if it's only you, it just kind of runs around in circles, and it's hard to kind of crit it at that point and kill it really fast, and then it turns and bites you in the face. Where if you Phase Lock it, you can Phase Lock it and just go shoot it in the mouth and it's dead. So there's that. There's a few other disadvantages. Um, the the co-op side of it is... Death Trap and the turrets won't target it. And there's also issues with melee zero or any zeros with execute hitting them because they are no longer enemies. They're actually, their dot even comes off the minimap because they're friends. So it has some negative co-op interactions like that. And the other co-op interaction, if people aren't used to it, is because that bubble's so small around their head, it's it can be hard to tell if an enemy's thought locked or not. And uh, you know that can have an effect on uh, co-op partners. Um, here it kind of annoys me because I'd rather have it go against those enemies instead of staying on that little guy, but um, so be it. Now, some of the advantages are, for subsequence builds, obviously a massive longer duration. 
but also the animation of it locking on that enemy is a lot faster since it doesn't pick them up. Therefore, you can get a lot more subsequence procs off, and that's pretty awesome. Um, the other thing, obviously, uh, you can have wreck and chain reaction on for longer, so it can be a DPS increase. But also, since the enemies, or that guy is attacking your enemy, and your enemies are attacking that, and the enemies are fighting each other, not only is an aggro relief, but um, enemies are doing DPS to each other, so in a way that's kind of a DPS increase, right? Um, and then, you know, more Helios and Rune procs. And post uh, that last patch, they do a lot more damage. I mean, you can see it in this video... I mean, Helios is doing work on these enemies. One of Helios' biggest weaknesses is the fact that it comes before Rune, so a lot of times you're hitting an unslagged enemy, but with Thought Lock, especially with tightly locked enemies in subsequence, and I guess this goes for subsequence anytime, but just a little bit more with Thought Lock, is the enemies are all kind of grouped up in that area, so they're already slagged when Helios goes off the second time. So that can be a good advantage for you. Um, Mad Mike kind of demonstrates the badass thing here. I can kill him pretty quickly. I mean, you saw there how much his cloud kill and Helios did. But um, although Mad Mike went down there fast enough, he did kind of turn his back for me so I couldn't hit him in the face and crit him really fast. So on some boss fights, like Captain Flint, you can phase lock and just kill instantly. But if you thought lock him, it's not as easy because he's got a weird crit, and then you'll turn around, and you probably won't be close to him, and all that stuff. But here you see thought lock, just fucking everything just melts because you just group them up. They're fighting each other, they're staying close, and this is why I love shotguns with it. But especially the butcher, because with the butcher's special effect of uh, you know gaining back ammo. You don't really have that reload in the middle of the duration thing too often, and it can reload fairly quickly. But um, you can just put down so much damage so fast with this thing, especially with the binder boosting wreck to just do insane things to the butcher's fire rate. And, uh, you know, Reaper obviously cranking up that damage with the binder com. Um, yeah, it's it does fucking work. I love the butcher. But um, in, in this combination, I've always thought like subsequence builds work better with shotguns for some reason. Again, just kind of that big burst damage. So in here, I was able to kind of get around there because he's nice and slow. But as you can see, the next enemy's coming up, and phase lock is still active, but the bubble's just bouncing around like an idiot. So, you, like I said, you can do a thought lock build without uh, subsequence. I think Handsome Dad does that. I think you're the one that does it if you're watching. But I mean, you, you obviously in this video, I'm destroying the shit out of this map. Here's another area where it gets stuck, but again, that's a subsequence problem, not a thought lock problem. But the bubble's just bouncing around like a fucking idiot there. And it's not like it was the end of the world, but I could have got a lot more procs off. I hate not having swap speed. But, uh, yeah, you can just get so many subsequence procs, it's not that hard to stay alive. I did also get elated with this build on top of subsequence, just to get a little more healing while it's active. Um, it's kind of a precautionary thing. I could have maybe gone without that and put those points into Accelerate, but I didn't really think I needed the extra damage. I guess non-phase locks time it would have helped, but... Yeah, the other nice thing about running a binder with a build like this, between the binder, um, quicken, and the bone, the cooldown is just stupid. Yeah, so that's Thought Lock. Let me know what you guys think about it, and I'll put the thread. It's actually in the old forms, but it's archived. Um, I think it's titled Thought Lock and the Rabbit That Got Away. That goes over it really well. Bookum Demo did that, and... Uh, me and him used to fight to the death over it, but uh, we finally agreed and or agreed to disagree. And it, it's all about what you find fun. So if I don't prefer thought lock to phase lock, you know that's on me. Whatever. But um, you know, since I'm putting out a lot of Maya, Maya content, I wanted to give you guys a fair look at thought lock and what it can do. 
And there are places where it's definitely better. Um, it's almost necessary to solo the dragons on OP8 with Maya. Uh, in the peak, it can be really good. I put out a video, um, I'll link that too, of a... Uh, there's three of us did Maya Thought Lock and one of them did regular phase lock kind of for surveyors. And that is about the easiest peak run for a player you could possibly do. It makes it an utter joke. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think of Thought Lock versus Phase Lock, and I will see you all later. Bye.